So Facebook moved into Myanmar in 2011, and it was clear at the, at the moment that they didn't have the uh, moderators needed to sort of handle Burmese. Um, I recently went to Facebook, talked to them. They said that their artificial intelligence can't even parse Burmese because it's not in Unicode, which is basically like how the computer would read the text. So they pushed into this market, and suddenly they're being blamed for facilitating genocide because hate speech has prolifer proliferated there. Um, and really, they just went in blind, and this is a consequence of that. How do you think um, the president's comments, and then Google's statement, by the way, Eli, is being received in the Valley today? I think the president and sort of the Republican Party have tied themselves in a knot here, right? They, they, they overruled net neutrality. We all know internet providers in this country have local monopolies on a business. You have few choices. One level up from that, you have Facebook and Google, which would tell you competition is just one click away. You have companies like Yelp saying, that's hey, that's not true. We actually need to regulate Google the same way you need to regulate Verizon. But this administration doesn't want to regulate Verizon. They don't want to regulate AT&T. They're very interested in regulating sort of the application layer of the internet. I think there's a major tension in that position. And I think Google, in this case, is much more right to say, well, hey, if you don't like it, go to Bing. It's actually a lot easier to go to Bing. It's a lot easier to go to Yahoo search. They might not be very good, but you can focus your attention on the market and say the market needs to solve this problem rather than reaching into our company. Uh, and I think that's kind of the point, Jason, is that you can go to some of these other sites potentially, but they don't have the breadth or the size or the scope of in the particular case of social media, say, of Facebook. I mean, you spent a very long time researching and reporting on the metrics they're using to sort of determine things like hate speech. A lot of the criticism has been that it's been a very opaque process. What have you found? Yeah, so Facebook has these public policies that say, you know, you can't harass people, hate speech is not allowed, but how that's defined has been held very close to their chest. So we got some leaked documents that says, you know, Facebook allows white nationalism and white separatism, but not white supremacy. And if you talk to like black history scholars, they will tell you that historically, you know, white supremacists have used white nationalism as sort of a cover for their white supremacist views. So you take that, an example like that, and you multiply it times thousands and thousands of different rules in hundreds of countries and, you know, hundreds of different languages, and you can start to see the scope of the problem. Um, we've been having a conversation all morning about what the regulatory framework would be if Google were to fall under regulation on algorithms. What, what is it? Is it the FCC's purview? You're a former attorney, right? You, you know about this stuff. This FCC does not think anything is in their purview. <laughs> right. So I don't think it's that. I think there is an idea of non-discrimination, right? There's an idea of antitrust, where you have these huge companies that are getting bigger, they have dominant positions in the market. We should look at their behavior to make sure they're not discriminating against competitors, against viewpoints. I think one of the major things we need to shift our thinking about is regulating individual pieces of speech is very difficult. Regulating behavior is probably a, a better approach, where you can say, well, these people are consistently behaving in a way that goes against our values. And we don't have to like write AI that flags words. We can actually look holistically at behavior. None of the platforms seem to be ready to do that. They are not willing to articulate strong values that they stand for. Twitter in particular seems to be very hands off. Mark Zuckerberg is talking about a Facebook court. Those are all very legalistic interpretations. I think they're not gonna work unless these companies have strong values they believe in. And the government decides it wants to pursue a non-discriminatory approach versus the FCC regulating. So maybe it's not the FCC, but the FCC has given more power to the FTC. Couldn't regulators still step in here? I think the FTC would have to say, one, they're making false promises, and I think it's very hard to define what those promises to consumers are. Right? Google says, we're just going to give you the best information. They've said a lot about how they want their search results to be vetted news sources, not fake news. They're making those promises and they're, they're trying to keep them. Are they perfect? I think we all know they're absolutely not perfect. They have a lot of work to do. I think that that's a really good point. And I think uh, you know the problem with Facebook and Google and Twitter is that their values are they're pursuing scale. And so if they take a strong stance against you know a certain type of content, they stand to anger someone on one side of the issue and stand to lose users. And that's something that you know they won't come out and say, but in talking to academics who have studied you know content moderation, this is something that comes up over and over and over again. It's that Facebook has strong values, but it's values 
values are you know, growth for the company, growth for the platform, and Mark Zuckerberg has talked about forming a you know, singular global community of sure. two billion people. That's never been done before in the history of humanity. Yep. It's, it's crazy. And, 